So this is Tony, and we are here at the second annual Insurance Nerds Day in partnership with Gamayora Sigma. So basically, this, this is Curtis, who does a lot of the Insurance Nerds videos. Curtis is famous for the InsureTech rap. You have no idea the excitement in the room today. Again, this is Saturday. That's the attitude. Okay, so, so sorry about the interruption. Okay, so University of Georgia, right? Awesome. So the energy in the room is, is just crazy. We have uh, industry le legend Bill Wilson, Paul Tetrell who runs the, the, the insurance library. Steven Goldstein, who just checked in, one of our speakers today. Hi guys. Steven is a uh, life insurance consultant, if I'm not mistaken. How are you? How's it going? Good. Thank you for the flexibility yeah, on switching sure. from one type of the, to the other. And here we have Amber Wallet, Adrian Gross, and Taryn Haas. Ah, Alicia Gross. Yes, Alicia. See, when I concentrate, I get it. When I'm distracted, I go back to Adrian. They're both nationwide. It's hard. It's hard. But you're actually involved in insurance nerds, uh, and, and Adrian is not. So I need to remember. Uh, so Alicia is, is is our product person. She always talks speaks about product. Uh, Amber is now the, the head of marketing at Old Penguin, and she's our key, our our ending keynote today. And the amazing Taryn ha Taryn ha Haas who mostly hides in the background, but she runs the blog part of Insurance Nerds for the last couple of years. And uh, she comes out once a year to, to, to give a uh, nerdy nano talk, basically. Uh, so thank you, for, thank you all for everything you do. Hello, hello. Which school do we have here? UC Dallas. UC Dallas, so you guys are, so you guys are our home team today, basically. Yeah. Okay, awesome, awesome. This is uh, UC Dallas also? Yeah. How big is the RMI program at UC Dallas? How big? That's that's big. Is that like second or third biggest in the country? I don't know. It's up there. Yeah, because that that is that is big for sure. So th thank you for being here. So good morning. Which school do we have here? Georgia State. Georgia State. Yeah. Awesome. Too. What's that? I said you got the iPhone 11 too. That 11 Pro Max. Oh, yeah. So I, I, I told myself that the reason I went for the Pro Max, even though I, I wanted the red, which only the Pro had, is because I'm going to do more video this year. So I'm, tr I'm trying to fulfill that promise. So, because I'm, I'm generally not a video guy, so. <laughs> Very meta. Uh, are you guys up at a specific school or? Grand no, this is. This is what, Grand Chapter. Grand Chapter. Awesome. You, you guys look so young. I thought you were one of the schools. Uh, I know. I know, I know. Th thank you, Grand Chapter, for everything you do. And, th and thank you for, for continuing us to involve us here. How's it going? How's it going? Uh, so w which school is this? Butler. 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 Famous for the student run insurance, insurance captain. Yeah. Our basketball and, team, our bulldog. And this is... Professor Sack, and right. then you go by Professor Sack, right? Zach, Zach Finn. If anybody is changing this industry, Professor Sack. So if you're not familiar with him, look him up. <laughs> I think you guys know me. In fact, if anything, my but, jokes are getting old for them. But, but, but remember, this this this, will, this goes in the Insurance Nerds uh, oh, YouTube, wow. not the Gamma YouTube. Oh, so there you, go. you might have some new audience there. There we go. <laughs> oh my God, the man, the myth, the legend, Matthew Maxwell. I love him. Matt. Ma Matt Matt and I just, and Precious, uh, just, we, we, we just did the CPCU Society annual meeting in New Orleans, what, like earlier this week? Yes. Uh, then we basically went home and did laundry, and now we're here in, the, in their home turf of Dallas, Texas for Insurance Nurse Day and Gamma Vera Sigma. So th thank you guys for, for being here. Thank you. I'm glad you found your way upstairs. Okay, so, so which, which school do we have here? North Central College. North Central College. Where is North Central College? Naperville, uh, in west of Chicago. 
Okay. Five minutes west of Chicago. That uh, we hope to have you soon there. Yeah, thank you. Uh, uh, excuse me, sir. You, you have a bit of an accent. Where are you from? Colombia. Colombia. That, that, so we have, we have, we have the, the Latinos representing right here. The Latinos, right here. Costa Rica, and exactly. Colombia. El tico y el colombiano. <laughs> for 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 people who think insurance is not diverse, we're working on it. We're working on it. Uh, which school do we have here? BCU. BCU. Awesome. The world's famous Tim Cook. That's it, buddy. No, not the, not not Tim Apple. No, not Tim, Tim Apple. Cook. Tim Cook. Uh, the one famous. person that, that is actually thankful for for Trump renaming Tim Cook. That's right. Uh, so he can take his name back. Uh, so great to have you here, BCU. Thank you, Tony. B BCU was a uh, instrumental part of the myth and legend of Tony Canyon's being right. built. We gave uh, him his start. He it launched his career. And, VCU is where my famous Superman picture was taken. That's right. Uh, so, so thank you, VCU. I will always have you in my heart. Um, Rams. Um, we are <coughs> thrilled to welcome back for the second year in a row our friends at Insurance Nerds for their second annual Insurance Nerds Day. So, students, can we welcome the Insurance Nerds this morning? Woo! Woo! Oh, we, we love the partnership, and we're so excited to have you guys here this uh, this morning, and excited for this day. I would think some of those could be. Hello, Dallas. horrible cold so I apologize if I sound like a frog and I recommend that uh, after we shake hands you, you do the, the, the hand sanitizer thing uh, this is what happens three weeks on the road conference after conference I've had two days at home uh, this Thursday and last Thursday basically to do laundry uh, it's been really crazy uh, at this point hopefully most of you know what insurance nerds is if you don't it is hard to describe because it's grown to this multi-headed hydra, but basically we are a blog, podcast, video podcast, book publisher, conference organizer, online community, and several other things all around the insurance industry. And 99% of it is there free, pretty much everything except for the books, for your use, okay? And a lot of people don't know about it, so help us spread the word. Uh, we are basically a community-driven organization around insurance, and it is super easy to get involved, by the way, because with us, it doesn't matter your job title, it doesn't matter your level of experience. If you have something to say, and it's interesting, we will help make sure that it, that it, it sounds good, that it looks good, and we'd love to have you on it. Uh, last year, I recruited uh, somebody that, that, that I met at, at this conference in Chicago, Miranda. Uh, to come on the podcast and, and uh, she had an interesting story. She's a hybrid student slash independent agent. So she came on the podcast and as soon as the podcast went live, she got, she got a phone call asking her to apply for, for a job with Westfield Insurance and she got hired on the job. She basically skipped like three levels uh, and now has, has a national sales manager role that would have taken her, you know, another six years to, to get to. Uh, I love those stories. So. If you have an interesting story to tell, whether on the podcast or as an article, it is super easy to, to, to get involved, super, super easy. Uh, add me on LinkedIn, send me a message, I'll explain how, how, how to do it. Help us spread the word about Insurance Nerds Day. This is our second time uh, at, at, uh, at Gamma, partnering uh, for Insurance Nerds Day. I, you probably don't realize it, but this is basically the biggest, maybe only TED style event, the second half of the day within insurance. This is basically TEDx insurance, we just can't call it that. They, they won't give you a license for a, for a single industry. But it's a really, really awesome event. And by the way, all of our speakers are here on their own dime. They don't, they don't get paid. We don't even reimburse flights. We're like the worst conference to speak for. Uh, they're here because they want to make an impact in the future of our industry. So, so, so make sure you're supportive. Make sure that, that you get into, into it. Uh, so I hope I didn't forget anything. Noel, like, yell at me quickly if, if there's something else I, I need to say. Uh, I only get a couple of minutes, which usually means I go for about 45. Uh, no one's saying that I'm good. So thank you very much, everybody, for being here. We love this partnership. Uh, 
You guys made a fantastic choice going into RMI, fantastic choice getting involved with, with Gamma, and, and uh, we're so excited to, to have you here and to see what you, what you do as, as you graduate. Way away, way away from everybody else. The one in a thousand or the one in 10,000 people, we call them giraffes. I call them giraffes, hopefully you'll call them giraffes. So, <laughs> giraffe. so what is a giraffe? It's not this kind of giraffe. A friend of mine sent me this. Come on in guys, it's not that deep. <laughs> That's not what I mean, but I appreciate the sense of humor. What I mean by a giraffe, unlike every other animal, a giraffe has evolved differently. Anybody watch nature shows? You have predators and you have prey. The predators, the teeth, the claws, the night vision, things to attack. Prey, what do prey learn? What do they evolve to do? They've evolved to hide. They've evolved to climb. They've evolved, evolved to burrow. They want to not be seen. They have quills on their backs. They have, they have shells so they can pull their body back in and protect their neck. What has the giraffe done? It has stuck its neck out further. It has evolved by making its most vulnerable part of its body bigger. It's more vulnerable than every other animal. And at 19 feet, kind of hard to hide. <laughs> okay? So it made itself really vulnerable by sticking its neck out. Well, what does it get for that vulnerability? The giraffe, being 19 feet tall, gets to see things others can't and reach things others won't. So the key to success for you is to see things others can't so you can reach things others won't. You want to get to the tail. I have people all the time tell me, do you really want to dress like that? Do you want to use that colorful language? Do you want to do that? It's like, uh, I'm gonna. <laughs> and that's okay because people will remember and some might not like it and that's okay. But the idea is not, if I want to not offend anyone, I might look a lot like other speakers you may or may not have. But the idea is you want to get a message across and sometimes that requires you to look a little different, act a little different, speak a little differently. So uh, another one, beware the hyenas, the lions, and especially the lion's den. There are people out there who will just not be happy with you when you're doing different things. Sometimes it's disruptive, sometimes it's scary. There are people out there who are somewhat you know, attacking and they don't want your, they, they want your uh, success. There are some people who are scavengers. And I don't mean that everybody's out to hurt you, just sometimes an environment is not positive for you. So you want to surround yourself with people who are positive. An exercise I would normally take people through in a longer deal is make a list of you know, 10 people you spend the most time with. And there's an old saying that, I shouldn't say old, the five people you spend the most time with, write down their names and everything about them. And if the five people you spend the most time with, if they're really funny, I know you're funny. If they're really thoughtful, you're really thoughtful. If they're jerks, it's a good chance you are too. So whatever those five people believe, that's probably you. You're the average of your five closest friends. So one of the things you do with that is you say, we, and, and people have a tendency to move toward the mean in any group. So if you want to be more successful, hang out with people who are more successful. If you want to be more philanthropic, hang out with people who donate more time to charity. If you want to be more studious, hang out with people who spend more time in school. So make a list of the people who are around, around you and start spending less time with people who are negative. Whether you call them a hyena or a lion or you get out of bad places or a lion's den, surround yourself with people who are going to encourage you and embrace you for who you are and for the things that matter to you. You only control three things, what you think, what you see, visualization, and what you do. So thinking positive, positive things, thinking about how you can be positive, reach higher goals, visualize things that you want to happen, not worry about things you don't, and then take action to reach them, that will get you there. You control what you think, you control what you see, you control what you do. And if you do not do these things, if you don't set goals, change how you think, work on your mindset, and you don't go all the way out in the tail to be different. If you want to hang out with the safety of the herd, the only way that you will become really successful is if you get lucky. You can hang around with everybody and maybe get lucky, or you can take the risk of stepping outside and doing something nobody else has done, or doing something nobody has done that way, or doing it in a place no one's ever done it, or do it for people who haven't, hasn't been done for, but do something different is where you're going to find the cool rewards.
See what's big at this. How's it going? Yeah, it's definitely going much so. How are you doing? How many gamma? How's it going? I don't think we're not having it. James, how's it going? How many gamma conferences have you done, Cameron? Oh my god, I don't even know at this point. So, uh, let's go from 2014 to now, so I would say. 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 6. Okay, so so for people who are in the, in the industry, whether they're executives or recruiters or just young interest professionals, yeah. if they have the chance to come to Gamma, they're not Gamma alum, why should they come? They should come because you get exposure to students, you get an understanding of you know what the students, like you basically see the rock stars of the insurance industry, future rock stars of the industry. So I think that if you want to get the best talent, the best, or you want to get, a, get in touch with the, uh, the future of this industry, this is the place to come. So that's what I would say. This is only my, my second Gamma, uh, and what I have found, it's, it's an incredibly unique opportunity to get in early yeah. with the future leaders of the industry. And that, that can only be good for your business. Whatever your business is, it can yeah. only be good for your business. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, no problem. How's it going? We're here at the Chris Jarvis table <laughs> after Insurance Search Day. Chris, that was really, really good. That was fun. I, uh, yes, I, I, love the, the, I love the giraffe shirt. Uh, but I, I didn't really know what it was about. I love it. Really, really love it. So thank you so much for, for being oh, here. Pleasure to be there. Happy to have anyone come. Tell us a little bit about, about, your, about your, your back back to the room uh, stuff. Back to the room. So we're trying uh, Six Secrets to Leveraging Success, best selling book. Uh, making these available 20 bucks, buy one, get one free, give one to a friend. Okay. And anybody who hands in a response form, happy to them on social media, uh, LinkedIn, booklet on how to get more. More connections. Oh, more that's because it is great. Yeah. Okay, awesome. But I mean, anybody can use it. Awesome. Okay. okay. Hope Thank we you. Do. that essence of trust the essence of leadership starts with trust it has to go somewhere but how do you actually establish the trust in the first place 
we already alluded a little bit to how do I understand the person? When you take it back to the time you can come and see where I'm going with this, right? He talked about learning everything you do about leadership from an infantry school. So he grew his credibility, his experiences throughout time. Along the way, there's probably some magnitude. Time is at about 15. That's how much they're going to make from your work. So therefore, you are coming in as a partner. And I want you to look at yourself as a partner, not as, oh, I'm just an employee. Oh, I'm just entry level. No, I'm just this. No, you're not. Eliminate the word just. I don't want you to say that because you bring value. So when you're thinking about partnership as a business mindset, you are partnering with that organization to help push them forward. You're going to help them make money, whatever you're doing, from the least of them to the uh, uh, largest of them. You're there to help them increase their profits on whatever you do. So I want you to think partnership, not employee, okay? That's what I really want you to think. So what does it mean to become the CEO of your career? It's having a take charge mentality so that you, you see I put that in capitalism, you <laughs> direct and manage your career instead of letting it be directed by someone else. Now didn't Chris just tell us that you have to be in charge of your life. You are the only one that can be in charge of your life. I said, that's true, he's still my son. Get out, I'm Chris. I said, uh-uh, that's not. And then perhaps the more disturbing part of all of this, right, is that by 2035, people may start dropping their insurance altogether. As we merge into, and we'll talk a little bit about this in a little bit, but as people merge to the autonomous vehicle environment, right, car sharing companies uh, were, are going to start taking over that marketplace. So when that occurs, those of us who live in an urban, come upon this tunnel, a little boy runs out in front of your vehicle. Too quickly for the car to necessarily stop dead. It has to make a decision. The car has to now make a decision. Do I run that child over or do I take your ass and slam it into the side of the tunnel? I'm getting video. Yeah. So, Bill, how many years in, in the industry? 50. I'm on number 51. You're number 51. Half a century. But I, I hear. And I still look this good. But I, I hear rumors that, that you've retired. Uh, well, they're just rumors. You're just <laughs> it's in my blood. I, can't, uh, I guess I'll retire when they retire me into the ground. Or it's crematory. <laughs> no, I, it's hard to let it go because you, but uh, who, Mark Twain or somebody that's find a job you love and you'll never work a single day in your life. What's, what's the session you're giving today? I'm going to talk about my book, When Words Collide, Resolving Insurance Coverage and Claims Disputes. And then this afternoon I'm talking about... Uh, my, my nano talk is uh, you have chosen wisely. Okay, and, and, and uh, who, who, who is the audience that, that you're speaking to today? Students, uh, 600 and some odd uh, college students and their faculty members. So, so many of these kids could be your grandkids basically, like age-wise. Uh, maybe great grandkids. <laughs> uh, not personally, they wouldn't be uh, my personal. I was uh, rather promiscuous in, <laughs> in my college days, but uh, no. We're not editing this, this is life. Oh, that's good. <laughs> It's not life, but, but uh, I have no secrets. Uh, okay, awesome. But Bill, uh, from the insurance community and from from the insurance community in general, thank you so much for remaining involved. I know that, that you retired from your professional job two years ago. Yeah, and uh, it sounds like you're busier today than you were before you retired. I am, and, and making uh, a twentieth of the money that I made back then. But <laughs> that's all right. I've never been motivated by money. Um, so when when you came to, to well, when we came to you to publish your book. And insurance search, you, 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 you said your goal was to have one, one of them uh, in, in every agent's office. Right. And you, you, what, what do you call your books, your little one? My little tombstones. When I'm 68, and uh. at some point I won't be here anymore, my books I'm hoping will be all over the world, little tiny tombstones <laughs> I leave behind. Th 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 yeah, thank you, Bill. Okay. okay. So, what, so, uh, so what, what is your name? Victoria. Okay, yeah. Victoria, and you're, you're at the Gamma Auto Sigma conference. Yes. But you were not involved with Gamma back dur during uh, your college career. No. Which, <laughs> you look right. 19 and a half, so I'm guessing you graduated two days ago. I graduated a year ago. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I'm so, 23. So you did not ma major in RMI or in uh, or in actuarial science? No, I what? was a double major in math and psychology. Math and psychology, okay. Mm -hmm. and, and, and what happened after you graduated? Um, after I graduated, I started looking for a job. 
and wasn't liking a lot of the ones that I was getting interviews for. A lot of them were sales positions, and I was not feeling it. So I knew about actuary stuff, so I started looking into it. And um, my parents told me, you know, if you want to go for it, you should. So took two tests. I was working part time, and then finally finished those. And yeah, so now Ola reached out to me and asked me to come to this. Okay, okay. So so, so, so let me see that name tag. Uh, so so what what is what is Ola? Uh, organization of Latino actuaries. Okay, okay. But that's not a very Latino last name. Uh, like I'm Latino. Like so <laughs> right. so Victoria. Victoria. Do you go by Victoria or Vicky or Vic or uh, Victoria? Victoria's fine. Yeah. Okay, so, so Victoria Stan- Stansel doesn't Stansel, sound very yeah. very Latino. No. Uh, so so uh, why are you involved with with the with Ola? Um, well, they reach out to me. I'm I'm half Mexican. Oh, my, there we my, go. My mom is full. My dad is uh, okay, so, German, so, 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 so I, I got his last name. So true mutt. Yes, okay. I am. Yes. Okay. So 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 uh, uh, so you've taken a couple of tests. Mm-hmm. Are you now working in the industry, or are you actively looking? So I actually just got a job offer a couple weeks ago. Congrats. I start on Monday. Ha- have you, so you've accepted it. I have. Yes. Or can you share who it's with? Um. Yeah. It's with Liberty Bankers Life. Okay. It's kind of near Farmers. Branch. So 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 you're gonna start your career as, as a life actuary? As a yeah, it's just actuarial. Um, it just says actuary. Okay, but, but Bankers Life is, 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 a, is a life company. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Okay, so. awesome, awesome. <laughs> well, 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 welcome, welcome to the industry. That's it's, it's an interesting yeah, story. Yeah, I'm excited. It's so, on Monday. <laughs> so, so um, for other people that did not major in risk management and, student and, and, and insurance that found out about, or maybe they went to a school that didn't have RMI, mm-hmm. uh, is it a good idea to come to a Gamma conference? Uh, oh, like, yeah. Why? Why? I mean, there's so much... Like, I've never met so many actuarial students in my life, and they all understand the struggle of taking the tests and not passing on the first try. And I'm like, you guys get it. Like, <laughs> so you, you, you feel like you found your tribe? Yeah, I feel like they understand because everybody understands how hard it is and not passing and trying to do school and work and take these tests. And so, yeah, and then everybody else has just been super nice and helpful okay. and giving me advice on, you know, well, when I was younger, this is what I did. So. Hey, this is Tony with Insurance Nerds. It's Insurance Nerds Day, and that means that I am wearing my cape today. Here in about 10 minutes, I'm going on stage to give my, my brand new session, The First Five Years, which is how to rock the first five years of your insurance career. Uh, this session is brand new, and I uh, will be trying some new stuff with it, and, and uh, then I'll be putting the whole session on YouTube. So. Uh, Hopefully, it'll be absolutely fantastic. This is Tony with Insurance Nerds. I think the camera's on this side. Okay. Uh, and we have Bobby Sriniva. Srivastava. Srivastava. I was so close. <laughs> so close. I, 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 and Curtis just, is laughing his butt nah. off at, 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 at my mispronunciation. <laughs> so, just, just so you know, I feel your pain because my last name is Kanyas. And, like, I, I end up being Kanas or, like, like, like mm-hmm. I've turned to... The, the bill is photobombing us there, so... <laughs> Uh, okay, so 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 Bobby, how do you pronounce your last name? Srivasta. Okay, the the, the uh, that's Bill Wilson behind us, uh, very discreet. <laughs> uh, so 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 Bob, Bobby, uh, what do you do? Oh, no, no, I should say this is a reverse uh, episode of making lemon <laughs> le, uh, lemonade out of out of, out of, out of lemons, uh, which is Bobby's little show, uh, one of the insurance nerd shows, uh, because I'm interviewing her. So so Bobby, what do you do? Um. <laughs> This is so funny. Uh, I'm a co-founder and chief product officer of a company called Ben Akiba, and we help life and annuity organizations with claims transformation. Okay. Yeah, you're the co-founder and chief claims officer, chief, chief product officer? Chief uh, product officer. At a, at a life insurance insure tech? Yes. Uh, uh, impressive. You're roughly 29, like, like if that. Oh my goodness. Uh, Bless you. <laughs> We were just talking. 1982 was a great year it, it for a lot a, of us. Are all three of us 82? Really? 1982 was the uh, I, best year for all of us. I'm December 1982. Wow. I'm yeah. May. May. Um, nice. May 28. So, May 28. Amber is um, June. Uh, Matthew Max, yeah. who, who's here, is December 15th, and I'm 19th. Um, I'm telling you, 82 so, was awesome. How, how was insured to connect both of you because, of it? because I, I missed it this year? Oh, gosh. It was it was nuts. I mean, I think we had our Slack channel uh-huh. for the insurance nerds, uh-huh. and I think I got to meet some of the people, but couldn't meet them all because it was just oh massive. yeah, there, there's no such thing. So so both of you, right, what what are you guys doing at at, at insurance nerds today? What brings you here? 
You go first, Bobby. I wanted to really hang out with you guys again <laughs> and talk about uh, making lemonade out of lemons and what I've learned from interviewing close to 20. Okay, and that's Devin probably telling me I have to go to, to, to the room where I'm speaking. So, Curtis, real, real, real quick. Uh, what brings you to, to, to Insurance Nurse Day at Gamma Era Sigma? Yeah, so doing lots of video stuff here today. So creating a, a highlight video of everything that's going on, recording a lot of the sessions, and overall just recapping the entire thing um, so that uh, we can get the word out for next year. Awesome. Thank you both. And uh, uh, Bobby's speaking, right? You have one of the sessions. So, so uh, I've recapped the last session, or some sort of video from that session will show up at, on one of our YouTube channels at some point <laughs> in, in, in the near or not so near future. Uh, so th th thank you both. Hey, this is Tony, and I just finished giving my uh, the first five years presentation at Gamma Era Sigma. Uh, this is a brand new presentation, first time I give it. Uh, it looks like it was very well received. I managed to get through all 50 slides in in in, in uh, 45 minutes, which I had, I had warned the audience I probably wouldn't be able to. Uh, so really, really awesome. Uh, I, I very much look forward to posting it on YouTube, and, and hope that everybody else benefits from it. smoke detector sensors. Uh, you can tell, now you see commercials where people sneak up to your door and you can see them on your phone sensors. We have water shop valve sensors. So my hypothesis is that with all of this new technology, we should be able to incorporate this into a homeowner's policy mm -hmm. and drive down lost costs and create a whole new niche of business for the young professional that's buying a home and loves technology. And okay, this is Tony Kanyas at Insurance Nurse Day, and uh, we have here Sean Michael Walker. So, Sean Michael, how are you doing today? Very darn well, thank you. Uh, although, although I got up at 3.30 this morning to be here. Well, that's right, we are, a little painful, so. we are in, I don't even know where we're at. It's, 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 it's been three weeks, I haven't been home, basically. Yeah, right. uh, so we're in Dallas, Texas, and, and Sean Michael li lives, lives in, in, uh, Denver. in, in Denver. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, Sean Michael's a damn cool guy, and, and is anybody else uh, curious why I keep saying Sean Michael uh, instead of instead <laughs> of just a question right so so, so real quick before before question. we talk about what you what you do uh, so so you go by Sean Michael Walker. I do I do so you introduce yourself like Sean Michael I your do. email says Sean Michael do, like your LinkedIn yeah, so yeah, so, yeah. so what so so in, in, in like 45 seconds like what's the story with Sean Michael why, uh, why Sean Michael well I was always Sean until I was about 21 or 22 so mm. we're here with a bunch of young kids they're all 21 22 23 and uh, I rebranded myself at a, at about that that age, uh, the first uh, carrier job interview I ever had, I went in and I introduced myself as Sean Michael Walker, and I got that job, and it started this great 16-year career in the insurance industry. But uh, the funny thing is, is a few months later, I said, "Hey, why did you guys give me that job?" And they said, "Well, you're blah blah blah, yada yada yada." But in in insurance and in sales, you should differentiate yourself immediately, and uh, and you did that not by some extravagant way, but you stuck your hand out and said, "Hi, I'm Sean Michael Walker," and uh, and I differentiated myself in, in that very moment, and uh, and it sticks out. And it's funny because I meet people in the insurance industry 16 years later, insurance agents I've met over the course of my career, and they'll go, "Sean Michael Walker," it's Sean Michael Walker. I can't believe it's Sean. You know, it's it like, works. How, I, does, how does this even work? I have I horrible know. memory for names. I have good memory for faces, yeah. but horrible for names. Yeah, and. Whether I remember your last name or not, that that's that's a gamble. But I definitely remember that's Sean Michael. Yeah, that's Sean Michael. Uh, so so well, so. Here's the other thing. Everybody mm -hmm. always goes, "Is it Sean or is it Sean Michael or is it Sean Michael Walker?" And it's like, doesn't matter. You just programmed it. Exa so, exactly. Uh, you, you, you know, I really don't care. So you what asked it three times, you and now you remember. You call me Mikey for all I care. Uh, yeah, you're, you're gonna remember it's me. It's programmed now. Uh, so you're here as a speaker. Uh, are you doing a TED Talk or are you doing a, a uh, uh, Nano Talk? Yeah, a TED Talk. So. Okay. Uh, it's, yeah, yeah, it's, it's not supposed to say Nano. Yeah. We'll have to beat me out. That was supposed to. We're supposed to say Ted. We're supposed to say Nano. Oh, so you're doing right. you're so doing an early Nano, nano talk. talk yes. Okay. So so uh, a little bit of a preview. Uh, what do you what do you do? Uh, I'm going to talk about evolution. So no, no, no. What, what do you what are you doing in your in your day job? Oh, what do I do in my yes, day job? Says, oh, okay. I'm the vice president of Premier Group Insurance. So it's the 55th largest insurance agency in the United States, according to the Insurance Journal. You're, and uh, you're pretty young for a vice president job. Uh, yeah, it's uh, I've been well. A lot of what I'm going to talk about today is evolution in your career and evolution and progression and, and not staying in neutral too long and, and always finding opportunity to progress. And okay. so uh, I've been pretty aggressive about my career development and my career path, and I think everybody should be. I hope all these kids are 
are, are not going to sit in a cubicle too long and want to move and groove and, and accept more and more responsibility. So when they're young, like me, mm -hmm. hopefully, uh, uh, they can still, you know, find themselves in these great positions. So, so Premier is a, an aggregator, right? A, right. a wholesaler, right? right. right. Uh, I don't know the exact, the exact uh, but, but there's many of those. So, yeah, so what, what, what makes Premier different? Well, so we're pushing 450 agencies uh, across the United States in about 42 different states. But uh, I, you know, the, each aggregator has their own value proposition. Each aggregator has their differentiating factors. I, I would definitely say that uh, also a part of my uh, talk today is, is uh, being a friend of the insurance industry. And I really think that at some point in everybody's career, you can slow down your hustle, if you will, and just say what is best for the insurance industry, what is best for the agents, what is best for everybody involved, and being a friend of the insurance industry. And I think Premier Group Insurance takes their time to consult people through the process mm -hmm. of what agency ownership looks like, how difficult it is, uh, and, and really get into um, the consultative process of the of the business decision that they're making. So it's much more than just access to the markets. What's that? It's much more than just access to the markets. Oh, he, oh, it's it's he, it's it's it, you know access to the market. I, I would say aggregators provide four things: uh, uh, a really great uh, contract, transparency between the home office and the agents that belong to that group. Uh, in transparency, there's a lot of compensation. All of that compensation. Uh, training and support, and then uh, carrier access. So carrier access is just one of those four deliverables. If, if you're a really great aggregator, if you're a really great group, uh, you know, I say it goes from good, better, best. If you're a best in class group, you're providing all four of those okay. deliverables, and you're consulting agents towards those groups that provide all okay. four of so those Okay, so basically, if you're with an, with an aggregator and you're only getting one or two of those, then you can do better. You can absolutely okay. do better. Awesome. There, are, there are many groups that provide all four of those deliverables. Awesome. It's not just Premier Group Insurance. And uh, and I, I, I wholeheartedly believe uh, anybody who's looking to own an insurance agency needs to find a group that can provide all four of those things. Th thank you, Sean Michael Walker. I very much look forward to, to your session later today. Yep. Thank you for thank being you. here. We'll see my book comes in. That's where my career the last 30 years comes in. Because the adjuster is not always right. Or the adjuster has one opinion and there's more than just one opinion about whether there's coverage or not. That's where we get into resolution. I'm going to come back to that a little bit later too. Uh, David Copperfield, the book by Charles Dickens, and in the book there is a line that says accidents will occur in the best regulated families. No matter how good you are at preventing uncovered claims and disputes that arise from that, they're always going to happen. And again, that's why I wrote the book. It's 356 pages with 160 claims examples, and it explains how in detail you resolve those, usually successfully. It's written from the standpoint of the policyholder and the agent for trying to get coverage. But I tell people that if you're in claims with a company, that you can use the same principles and doctrines I talk about in the book to explain to a policyholder why there isn't any coverage. They think that everything's covered where it should be. Okay, this is Tony at Insurance Nerd today at Gamma Iota Sigma. Oh. And here I have uh, Grant and Clem. Uh, did I say that correctly? Yeah, Grant, Grant yeah. and Clem. Yeah. Uh, a lot of people say it the other way around. Uh, Clem Granton. Oh. You say it all the time. But okay. it's, uh, yeah. So, yeah, Grant is, is, that is that a family name? Um, so actually my middle name is Van, so Grant Van Clem was real stark, so uh -huh. my parents had the foresight and said Grant and Van Clem flows oh, very well. Okay, 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 so, 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 so it, okay, yeah, I, I got yeah. it. And, and uh, you're a Gamma alumni? I am, from 2016, uh, I was the uh, chapter president for Alpha Mu Chapter. Alpha Mu Chapter, yes. for, the, for those of us non-Gamma people, what is Alpha Mu Chapter? Virginia Commonwealth Chapter. Virginia Commonwealth yeah. Chapter, okay, so ran by, by Tim Rams. Cook. Yes, Okay, Rams, fa yeah. fa fantastic. Yep. Uh, so, so, so uh, we met originally when when I spoke at that chapter. Yes. Yeah. Oh, okay. So perfect. A long time ago. But perfect. yeah, I'm really glad to be out here at the Insurance yeah. Nerds Day uh, and kind of talk to my cohorts because you know I'm just a few years removed uh -huh. uh, from being a student. And and so you graduated and, and RMI worked out. It, it, you got a great job at, at a reinsurer. Yeah. Yep. So yep. So I worked for Willis Towers Watson, the broker, and specifically in the reinsurance division, where uh, I am a reinsurance broker. So an insurance company is my client. 
And so uh, it's a place catastrophe coverage is for them. So if there's a hurricane or a tornado that comes through, we are actually helping the insurance company pay for those claims. So it's really neat to show that we have a direct impact on people's lives, especially so in the catastrophe. You sell reinsurance to insurance carriers? Correct. Sell insurance to insurance carriers? Yep. Okay, so, so if you sell insurance to insurance carriers, are there others that sell insurance to reinsurance carriers? Yes. Are, yep. there, are there like re, re reinsurers? There are, there are. It, it's it's the financial market, right? So yeah, it, it's really neat. So. Awesome, and you're, you're one of the speakers today. I am. Uh, so so are, are you one of the of the TED Talk speakers or, or one of the, uh, excuse, yes. excuse me, I, I, I have to yeah. pick myself out. Are, are you, you uh, take two, yeah. are, are, are you one of the nerdy nano talk speakers? Or, I am. Oh, okay, yeah. just awesome. Just for uh, giving just a quick uh -huh. speech about, about eight minutes to nine minutes long, just quick, but just want to get the point across to students about how they can launch their career uh, at an early, early stage uh, in, 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 in a successful way. Just a couple, couple, couple helpful hints uh, that I've compiled over the last four to five years um, and just some uh, kind of daily reminders that I, I have. So. And you, you, so you went to school in Virginia and mm -hmm. we're now in Dallas. Yes. Uh, and you're now based here. I am. Okay. Yep. Awesome. So, so basically your risk management degree kind of allowed you to choose where you wanted to live, like allowed you to choose a company oh, that- Very easy. You, you wanted to, to, to come south? That was, that was my priority was to come to Dallas and very easy to do. I mean, that's one of the things I'm gonna talk about today is how if you have a goal or priority, then say that in the interview or apply for jobs because there's insurance industries is in every city, small, big, everything. So, so I'm, I'm assuming, I'm assuming Willis, Willis Towers Watson, home office is probably in New York City. Uh, for North America, but it's actually in London, which I've actually been able to travel to the home office in London. Oh God, I'm gonna talk about that today, and then uh, so, so envious. you should be there. If you're the, not, shame on you. The, 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 <laughs> uh, I, I will. I will definitely be there. Probably take, taking video. Yeah. Uh, are, uh, did you get the chance to go to Lloyd's while you're in London? I did. You I guys sat, have I sat it so with good. Lloyd's, and then um, actually was able to go to India and do operations training uh, as well. So it was a great, great okay. program. I, I want to stop the video now and like swing my my, my camera. Uh, <laughs> out the window i'm so mad that I, I i haven't had opportunities like that that's incredible it's, it's been great uh just a few years out of college it, 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 it majoring in rmi there's just nothing like absolutely. it absolutely uh if, if you didn't major in rmi go get your cpcu and at least yes. uh, get as close as you, as you can to it uh but but uh if, if you're in high school and somebody you know in the insurance industry sent you this video uh major in, go, go to a school that has rmi major major in rmi become active with gamma yep. these guys have it so good you have no idea <laughs> Hey, this is 28 Insurance Nerds Day. Uh, we're almost done with, with the, with the, uh, the learning, learning labs. So pretty soon we'll be starting with the Nerdy Nano Talks. I'm really, really excited, really, really excited. But before, uh, can I switch the camera? Well, I've already started filming, I cannot. So I'll have to stop oh. the filming and restart. I'm out here walking around Insurance Nerds Day and hiding from the crowd somehow, uh, apparently doing the exact same thing I'm doing. How meta is this? Uh, <laughs> Uh, we, we should we should ha we, we should have this part of the video on 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 a nerdery episode like like half of the screen with your yes. your shot half the screen with my shot. Uh, so so Amber, why are you out here hiding by yourself? Uh, so I was having a great conversation uh, with Dargan Thompson, um, prepping for my speech and getting some coffee. Okay. But fantastic uh, content this morning. Was so excited. I did not run through a brick wall, but only because I don't have a helmet to do so. But definitely okay, I'll try that later. So, so, so Amber, um, you you had the good luck of going to ITC this year. I, I could not go to ITC, uh, so I know you're tired. So you you're now been to ITC two years in a row, right? Yep. So so last year, you were you were you, you almost snuck in like like you had you had a ticket for it, but but uh, very little reason to be there or or, or uh, uh, like you had to sell it to your boss to get to get in yeah, there basically, yeah. right? Uh, and. Uh, did you, did, like before going, were you like confident that that was the place for you to be? Like This year or last year? Last year, last year. Last year, I knew for sure I wanted to go. Like everyone was talking about but it, all the, the social the, media. Did you feel like ahead, ahead of time, were you super confident going there? Like, um, no, uh, I did not get 100% uh, success rate on my meeting invites, say that. Um, <laughs> I mean, did have some fantastic meetings on site last year as well, but this year, it was definitely more action-packed. Okay. So, 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 you're getting, you're getting, hold on, hold on. So, so last year, you, 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 you ended up writing a song. Yes. Uh, called InsureTech Wannabe. It's still on YouTube. Uh, and that, what was that song about? So, as the name would imply, um, it is about being a wannabe in the insurance, uh, insure in the tech, insure tech space. space. 
So before the conference, a few of us old carrier folks were talking about like, okay, so how do we do Old carrier folks, <laughs> What do we do? How do we blend in with all those intertech people? So that's kind of what the conference, or what the, um, the song of what the conference was about. Like literally it was recreating in a comical way, like my prep, like figuring out what outfits to wear, okay. blending, getting them like the lingo down, reading them a blockchain. <laughs> so so, so la la last year, you, you were kind of a groupie at the, at the conference. Accurate. And yeah. and, and this, this year you're kind of an A-lister. Uh, so still, still part groupie, but uh, okay. I had more meetings this year. So, <laughs> so uh, did you have to fight to, 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 to get your company to, to, to pay for the ITC ticket this year? I did not, know. Why? why? Why is that? What are you doing nowadays? So, um, Bull Penguin doesn't just go to ITC and be like, we go to so, so, ITC. So, so you're at Bull Penguin nowadays? <laughs> yes. I thought you were an old-fashioned carrier underwriter. <laughs> a part uh, of my heart will always okay. be an old-school underwriter. I mean, so, the carrier in me is, you can't distinguish okay. that. So, so you managed to talk your, 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 your way into a call center, I don't know, sales role at, at Bull Penguin or something like that. <laughs> uh, so what, what do you do for, like Bull, for Bull Penguin? Uh, director of marketing. Okay. Is that, is that, so you're basically running marketing for one of the hottest insure techs out there. So yeah, I'm gonna talk about this a little bit in my 230 slot, but like okay. literally like all my dreams have come true. Like I can't even, we were doing an activity um, in the first session, like imagining uh -huh. our, ide our ideal life. And I'm like, yeah, it's this right here. This is, this is it. Like, so, so from here on, every, every time you say all my dreams have come true, the first thing you should say is, as soon as I met Tony Canyons at, at, at ITC <laughs> 2018, all my dreams you, come true. I may have a shout out. Um, like locked into my okay. into my speech. And and so so, so this camera, uh, uh, part of it I'm sure is is is, is the marketing for Paul Penguin. Like you, you have to do some some camera stuff. But uh, but what else do you, do you do you do do you do with your fancy camera? So this actually this beauty is my camera uh, for my video series. So it's for You're, tell me more about that. The insurance nerdery. The insurance nerdery. What the kind of word is nerdery? Is that in the dictionary? Um, nerdery. Hypothetically, no, but I'm waiting for it to be added. It'll be the word of the like year next year. 2020 uh -huh. yeah, 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 <laughs> is my yeah. goal. So what is the insurance nerdery? Um, so John Bachman and I, a fellow carrier nerd turned, um, I'm a short tacker. Sure we, <laughs> I just invented that by the way, copyright TM. Yeah, you saw it here. <laughs> yeah. Saw it here first. So we co-host and we switch off every other week. So um, every other Wednesday at 5.30 a.m. Central, I'll publish an episode, typically like five to 10 minutes max. Um, covering insurance industry trends, events, what's going on, what's happening. What How many happening. episodes are there? Like 15 or 20 now? Um, so we're in week 37 or 37. 38, I think. Okay. So, yeah, I was just thinking about, I don't want to jinx it. We've never missed a deadline. Uh -huh. Like, how are we doing this? <laughs> so. and, 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 and by the way, uh, uh, I, should, I should fill it in here. Uh, so so the, ner the insurance nerdery is part of insurance nerds. Uh, and I, I, at insurance nerds, there are no real deadlines. But we basically tell them to make up their own deadlines. So they've never missed the deadlines they give themselves, basically. Uh, so, so, so fantastic job. And, and we are getting so much incredible feedback about the insurance nerdery. Oh, I love uh, that. Truly, truly, truly. So, so today, uh, your session, you are the... Uh, what are you? One of the, one of the nerdy talks. You're, you're, you're one, so you you have a... I have the keynote at 2.30. So I get a half an hour. You're the closing on. keynote. You're the closing keynote in Church Thursday. So yeah, I'm 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 so excited. No no pressure. The closing keynote is the, you know it's the one people remember, right? The closing keynote. <laughs> I don't know how you top the opening keynote, um, uh, but I'm not gonna try. And actually, my topic ties perfectly into what Chris was talking about. Did, did you did you guys like, like like synchronize ahead of time? Is that you how know, that went? I got so lucky. I, I was even thinking I'm like I. I'm not like super concretely familiar with everyone else's speeches, but it seems like it's all tying together so, so well. So that's just awesome. fantastic. Thank you, Amber. We, we are so excited to have you as, as, as our so closing keynote. Uh, we probably can't afford you next year, uh, but I, I'm so happy to have you here. So I went ahead and got myself some coffee to get reloaded just before the Nerdy Nano Talks, which I think are a hike from here. It's been an incredible day at Insurance Nurse Day 2019 gamma, at the Gamma Havana Sigma Conference. <coughs> How's it going? Hey. Of course. Oh. I, iPhone 11 Pro Max. Already? Uh, well, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It came out a week ago. Of course I have it. <laughs> 
I went to pick it up on release day. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, I pre ordered. Oh, good. Have you seen our mosaic? That is really cool. These are all individual pictures that people have posted this week from uh, using the hashtag GIS2019 on our social media platforms. And they created this mosaic um, of this picture that shows three of our students with the. They graduated with their with the gammas, their gamma um, soul. Is there like a special software to make the mosaic? Like, how do you make it look like a mosaic? Yeah, it's a Butler University sponsored uh, uh -huh. company, uh, or sponsored this, and which is done by a company. So someone from the company came and had this software, and printing out stickers and all this stuff. And so we had students actually help them out by printing, putting the stickers on there to create the mosaic. Itself. That is super freaking cool. That's really cool. Tim, where are you working? Yeah, what, what are you doing nowadays? Well, you were still I, a student when we chatted. Uh, yeah, I was a year student ago. then. I'm with Marsh and McLennan Companies. I'm an associate client advisor. Okay, so you, you went to, uh, to a, a, little, a little broker? Yeah, sure. you know, oh, no, it's big broker. Okay. Yeah, yeah, no, I know. <laughs> gigantic broker. Big, yeah, there you go. Gigantic is a word, Tony. Okay. <laughs> so, Marsh and McLennan. Right. What I'm are you doing for Marsh and McLennan? Multinational practice, uh, client advisor. So I how are my kids get rid ridiculously cool jobs? <laughs> like, I am so envious. Really um, cool Okay, so you've been a Marshall Atlanta for like a year now, a little bit less than a year? Closing to a year. That's okay, right. yeah. so I, so it sounds like, just early in your career, it, it, it sounds like, like RMI and Gamma membership right. kind of worked out for you. It sure did. Okay, so somebody did you a, a big favor, like pushing you in. To, it's probably uh, the biggest investment I've done so far. So. How, how did you learn about RMI? Because nobody shows up at college wanting to do RMI. I got an email uh -huh. from the school marketing emails. Would typically delete those to be honest with you but I happened to open that one and he was asking me if I was interested in a risk management and insurance um, track I uh, read were you, the so you were already at the school I was already at the school you were like a business uh, major. enrolled in corporate finance okay I ran into the advisors risk management and insurance advisors at UC Dallas office uh, 45 minutes later I was. I've made my mind. Insurance and, was the place to be. And and basically, it's, so so let, so let me let me get this the the pitch they gave you. Yeah. Hey, you're here for like the sexiest major within the business school. Instead, come to insurance. Right? No, actually, I, I think what sold me into that is she got personal. She she told me about her career in insurance and what she loved about it. And, and I think that was very important for somebody to take the time and tell me about what they've done, okay. and what they've gotten out of it. Most other um, uh, carriers or, or, or majors at school, they will just tell you to join, and then you'll be guaranteed a job. But that always doesn't work, right? I mean, so, to hear so somebody get personal and tell you what they've done. Authenticity. And, authenticity. And, yeah, and somebody's was, real story. Absolutely. Is what sold you into majoring in RMI. Absolutely. That that is that, that is that's fantastic. Th thank you. Deborah, we've been connected on LinkedIn. Have we met in person? <laughs> yes, yes, like we have. four times, uh -huh. of course. Yeah, this, yeah. this is typical Tony. In Chicago, and okay. then in Dallas, and so, stuff, so, 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 uh, and, and by the way, thank you. Okay. Uh, so, 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 tell me a little bit about uh, what, what do you do. Well, I'm the director of the Risk Management Insurance Program. So I have uh, we started the program from scratch. UT Dallas. Two, uh, two, UT Dallas started there in fall of 2015. Start off with five classes. Now we have seven classes. And so we are encouraging everybody in the School of Management, our business school, to take our classes as electives. But we have about 200 students in the program. We've already graduated about 85 in the last three and a half years. So everyone so, employed. So, yeah. It, so it, it, it's, it's not at this point a major. No. It's a concentration it's, within it's, finance? Yes. And it's put that way on purpose. We oh, purposely, okay. when I started the program, uh -huh. I wanted it to be, to be part of finance. We're also a concentration in global business and in business administration. But our classes are open to everyone. Okay. But risk management is leaning more toward data analytics and toward data science. And our kids, being finance majors, they have upper level classes that not every school would require them to have. Okay. So they're coming out of school being professionals at text mining and data mining and business analytics. And oh, by the way, we know risk management and insurance also. So it's by design. We will never be a standalone major. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. So it's a different approach. Mm -hmm. Very, mm -hmm. very, very, well, very Well, you'll find that most of the schools here are in the finance department. Yeah. I know, so, I know that, that not all of them are majors, like, right, by far. Right. Um, because... Honestly, we I want these kids to have upper level um, data analytics classes, business valuation, international business, upper level finance classes. So they, they take a lot of um, very 
hard classes <laughs> they do right. in addition to their risk management classes, okay. which makes them better business people. So, how, so, how old is the program right now, the RMI Three piece? and a half. Well, this is our fourth fall. Four, we started four. it fall of 15. Okay, so you've... You've only had a program for four years, mm -hmm. and you're already having ridiculously incredible success. I know, yeah. Pl pl placing kids. Because <laughs> I have ridiculous, into, uh... incredible students. Yeah, they're awesome. That is that is incredible. Yeah, because the UT system, UT Dallas in particular, are very supportive of the program. Mm -hmm. It takes support from the dean and the president and everybody else to make it happen. Okay. And the industry uh. in Dallas is phenomenal. We have huge industry partners. We couldn't do it without them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so somebody's going to be the lucky camera person. Who wants it? Okay, awesome. So uh, it does have tripod legs, so you can put it down okay. on the table or whatever, but but uh, yeah, just we just need video of, of all the speakers. Okay. In fact, it'd be best if you put it on the table. Yeah, just I try don't to like, minimize the stuff that was also on it. Does that work? Recording. Sounds good. Okay, let's start this thing. I'm like, like Hello, 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 Dallas. <laughs> Somebody, somebody jumped in the back. That, that, that made my day, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, welcome, 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 welcome to the second annual Insurance Nerds Day Gamma Iota Sigma Nerdy Nano Talks. There we go, there we go. Uh, this, this is so exciting. I, I have been wanting to do short, TED style sessions within insurance for several years. And for several years, I looked for an organization to back us up to do that. And uh, a little, almost two years ago, uh, I had dinner, uh, I had lunch with with, uh, with Noel. Noel doesn't need a last name, you all know who Noel is. Uh, I had lunch with, with Noel in uh, Philadelphia. And we talked about a lot of different things in the middle of a snowstorm. And as I walked out, I told her about my idea for this crazy one-day conference for young insurance professionals uh, with Nerdy Nano Talks as, as part of it. And Noel said, let's do it. And I said, awesome. So are we talking like two years from now? We'll have like a long planning session for it. And she's like, no, let's do it, Chicago. And she gave me the dates. And I could not believe it. And we did it, and it was amazing. And this year, we're doing it for the second time, I hope, of many, many, many times. We have seven or eight fantastic uh, Nerdy Nano Talks. Okay, so here we have uh, Tony Kajas at Insurance Nerds Day. Paul Tetro. Tetro. Tetro, okay. I, uh, Paul, what, what, what do you do? I'm the executive director of the insurance library in Boston. The insurance library? What is the insurance library? The insurance library is a library. Uh, the focus is on uh, risk management and insurance information. Uh, we do education. We, uh, it's a 130-year-old institution um, that's been maintaining and collecting and curating a, uh, a collection of uh, relevant information uh, uh, in, in, in that time. And, and today we're, we're, we're an active uh, institution now offering education, information resources, research services. We have two uh, Cracker Jack uh, librarian researchers uh, who do a great job. And we, we're, we're, we're here as a resource for the entire uh, industry or as, um, as I'm calling it more and more, the insurance community. So, so surely the insurance library is not a physical library. Those don't exist anymore. No, it is. It is that, in fact. And, and we, we're a library. We're a building in downtown Boston. It's a great place to visit right on uh, State Street. So uh, find us online and, and come on when you're in Boston to uh, visit. Uh, we're a library. We have books. You can actually check out books. And even if, if you're a, a member across the country, uh, you can reserve a book and we'll, we'll mail it to you. You can keep it for a couple weeks. But, uh, but we can also, you know, we collect uh, you know, resources, journals. So if you're doing uh, literature research or any kind of research, project we need more information about anything in insurance or risk management. I, I, I learned about it thanks to to uh, to Nick Lamparelli who lives in Boston mm -hmm. and insurance nerds hosted uh, a book launch uh, in Boston for uh, Rob, Rob Galbraith's Gal 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 yeah. The End of Insurance as we know it uh, back when we could get on Rob's calendar Rob's gone a little too big uh, <laughs> he's been all over the world yeah right. exactly right. Uh, right. Really in, the, in, the, in the rollout for Rob's book and we had a uh, great event that uh, got some new people into the library and it's, it's, it's we've had some uh, you know snowballing from that uh, event good good we connected with a lot of different it, uh, it people, is so. a gorgeous facility if you are in Boston if you go through Boston make time to go check out the insurance library uh, Paul staff is fantastic and it is truly a gorgeous gorgeous incredible place uh, and they have all the insurance books so uh, if you're in Boston for 
you know, a few hours, stop make time, in, stop, stop visit, in, uh, visit, get a cup of coffee, and recharge your phone. Visit the insurance library. Use the bathroom even, so it's a, it's a great place. Thank you, Paul. Thank you. Thank you okay. So, yeah. so, so uh, we have Andrew Norton here. Uh, Andrew, this the, uh, Andrew lives in Tulsa. Yeah. And this, this yeah. is close enough. <laughs> we need to do a slow thing. Uh, and Andrew lives in Tulsa, and this is, I think, the third time in a uh, week and a half, two weeks that, that I see Andrew. Second or third time. Yeah. Uh, so, so uh, uh, we we both <laughs> we we both happen to be at uh, in in in, in uh, Austin, Texas, a week and a half yeah. ago. And right now in Dallas, you drove down from Tulsa to come to this uh, event? From Oklahoma City. Yeah. From Oklahoma City. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How long is that drive? Uh, three hours. Three hours? You drove, drove You drove three hours just to come to insurance yeah. next day? Yes. Well, I didn't make a difference. Once I saw it in May, I was like, I signed up in May, I'm like, I'm going. What Hands motivated down. you to, to uh, drive three hours to be here for insurance next day? Honestly, I'd say probably the thing that motivates me for most conferences is the fact that I can go here and talk to other people that are actually passionate about something that they're not afraid to talk about. Meaning I go to work and it's like, oh, you're here because you have a job. But I go here and it's like, oh, you're here because you like insurance or risk. One of the two are both. And it's cool. Uh, a Andrew is, c is currently famous as one of the one of the three people in the country that has an, an, an INS nerd uh, license plate. Yep. I am one of those three people. The, he, he's, the, he's another one of those th three people. Uh, he's also future famous as the father of the youngest CPCU. Uh, we're, we're working on it. Little, little Micah. How old is Micah right now? He's uh, a year and a half, or two years in December. He's so, a year and a half now. So, my, Mike is homeschooled, and both parents have worked in insurance. Uh, and uh, uh, when I met little Micah, I, I suggested that, that, that they raise him to be the youngest CBCU. Uh, and apparently, like, they were ahead of me. They were already been working on it. Uh, so, yeah, little Mike is, 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 is being raised to be the youngest CPCU in Fingers history. Fingers crossed. CPCU maybe at age 12 if the institutes will let him. Or, well, no, I guess it would be hard because of the insurance. Yeah. I got to so, weave it in there. Uh, we're, the, the, their institutes, uh, we're at, and CPCU Society, but their institutes, uh, what if he interns at a, at, at a carrier or broker? Will, will, will you allow a 16-year-old CPCU? I hope so because it would be really awesome. I go to InsurTech or something else. I start my own agency or any of my other own insurance it, business. It, exactly. Boom, he's got his segment. I think the biggest problem is, is, is going to be the the, uh, the work permit, right? I, th I think most states don't give it to you till, till he's 16. Yeah. I think that's, that, that'll be the hardest thing. But other we'll than that, I'm not worried about we'll, we'll figure it out. So anyway, thank you, Andrew, so much. You know, they'll just won't give him the designation until he's 15 uh, years. But he'll have all the coursework. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Uh, so, so, in fact, w w when he is a, uh, w one of the conference speakers, you know, w when, when they do give it to him, it'd be awesome for him to get up there and be like, I finished my coursework 10 years ago, <laughs> but, I, exactly, but, but I didn't have my work permit, so I couldn't get my two years of professional experience, but here I am now. Uh, so anyway, Andrew, thank you so much for driving all the way from Oklahoma City. Yep. Uh, and coming to insurance nurse day. So I will probably never be able to pronounce your name right. I know, so But uh, we have uh, Nicolette, uh -huh. what's your last name? Barrett. Barrett, yes. okay, Nicolette Barrett runs. Uh -huh. I rock development solutions, LLC, doing business, I rock resumes. I rock resumes. Yes. So, so what, what exactly do, do you do with I rock resumes? Well, I am a certified career coach and what I do is help people market and brand themselves for their next career. Awesome, yes. awesome, awesome. But, but uh, uh -huh. like I would love to work with somebody like that, but I would like them to be an insurance specialist, somebody that actually knows insurance. Yes, and I am a CPCU, AIC, and CLU holder in addition to four certifications in the career field. Okay, so so, so, so you got your CPCU yes. and, and then you left the industry and, and, and went to... Actually, I'm still in the industry. What? Yes, I am a corporate leader at a major insurance company for the last 18 years. I've been in the insurance industry for 25 years. I run my company also full-time. <laughs> yes. So you heard it here. If you need yes. help with your resume or you need career coaching and you're in insurance, I know that you do more than insurance. Uh, yeah, I do. But yeah. if you're in insurance and you're career coaching, it, it's it's a no-brainer. <laughs> it's a no-brainer to go with yes. Nicolette. Uh, who, and by the way, uh, Nicolette spoke uh, today at Insurance Nerds Day. Uh, ha, ha, what was it like speaking at Insurance Nerds Day? Oh, it was absolutely phenomenal. It was standing room only, and the energy in the room was absolutely wonderful. We talked about career mindset shift, uh, becoming the CEO of your career. I, I walked into your session, and I actually took a little video. Uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, the, the, the kids were like spilling out into a hallway. <laughs> like it was absolutely standing yeah. standing the room only. Yes, uh, it was wonderful. Awesome. Th thank <laughs> you so much for, for coming and speaking at Insurance, at insurance yes. Nurse Day. Thank you for the invite. I appreciate you, Tommy.
Uh, so, so, so Matthew, thank you for coming to me. Oh, uh, Curtis has them. Curtis is the video guy. Um, thank you for coming to Insurance Nerd Day. Uh, this year it was local for you, almost local. I mean, it's it's, it's like you're in Dallas area, but this was like an hour drive for you or more. So that's how crazy Dallas is. Uh, so thank you for being here. You don't know this yet, okay? But Insurance Nerd Day and Gamma Conference bounds. Uh, from Dallas to Chicago and to Chicago to Dallas. So next year it's in Chicago. So if you make it awesome for you, but but the following year it, it, it's it's in Dallas, okay? So assuming you're still living in Dallas, you're one of our, of our nerdy nano talk speakers. So you know, so, so, so if you had to guess two years ahead of time, if you had to guess what is your nerdy nano talk gonna be about? Oh, you're not alive. If I were to to guess and give, you know what? I'm gonna make it. Uh, I'm gonna make it a little more challenging. Okay. Than that. I'm not gonna guess. I'm gonna leave it a surprise. Oh. <laughs> have to find out in two years from now because you're surprising me with this. Uh, I'm gonna surprise you with. That, that is the cheapest cop out, but it's fair. It's fair. So, so um, just in the last two weeks, uh, you were at the CPC Society annual meeting uh, in New Orleans with me, and now now at Insurance Nerds Day, um, both great conferences. Uh, and I'm, I'm sure you've done a conference here or there before. Uh, so, so, so tell me, how was Insurance Nerds Day? Insurance Nerds Day was amazing. The, being able to see the intersection of Insurance Nerds with Gamma Otic Sigma and the different universities, having the ability to, to witness how many students were in this room this morning when all the different local chapters of various universities were here on site. It encourages me to know that universities aren't actually putting out a push to get kids interested in the insurance and risk management industry. And so it's it's happening. Uh, this this guy has a lot to do with that. Do, 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 does it give you happening. hope for the industry? Like, does it get you excited oh, for the absolutely. future of the industry to have met some of those kids? Absolutely. Awesome. Uh, what about CPC Society annual meeting 2019? How was that? How much time do you have? <laughs> we're it, trying. To, it was it was unreal. We're, we're trying to keep this as short interviews. So I, let, I, I, I had expectations of how it was going to go, what it was going to be like. The I, apparently I've got a small mind because those expectations were far exceeded. Awesome. So let's just say. Uh, for 2020, it's now uh, the annual meeting is now called Into Risk. Yes. People, go to Into Risk. Absolutely. Do your best to go to. You don't have to be a CPCU. Go to your best to go to Into Risk. In the spring, we have Scale, which is the small, the, the leadership uh, CPCU conference. That one's important uh, this coming spring, and then and then Into Risk is in uh, DC in fall 2020. Make one, make both. You don't have to be a CPCU. Uh, so anyway, uh, by the way, my head is not twice the size of, of Matt's head. It just so happens that I'm the one holding the camera and I'm a lot closer to the camera than he is. He's doing this on purpose, by the way. Like He's a, a lot taller than me. And with the way I'm holding the camera, my face looks twice as big as his. Uh, so thank you.